Council, my family and I left the country where my father was threatened and my brother and I were almost kidnapped because my father ethically, ethically, it was ethically against the Colombian guerrilla for taking a stance against violence and narco-terrorism. For all of you that have not had to flee the country you call home, that has not had to leave behind your family, uh, your friends, the place that saw you take your first steps and heard you say your first words. Let me tell you something. It is not a decision you take lightly. I still, to this day, remember sitting at our dining room table after an invitation to my dad's funeral was sent to us in the mail. I remember the pain in my dad's eyes to have to say to us that we needed to leave. Leaving your country is not a decision you take lightly. We came to the United States on June 25th, 2001, when the world was a different place. I took almost, it took almost four years to process a political asylum. After court hearings, requests for evidence, relieving painful experiences in front of an immigration judge, in, 2000, uh, in 2005, our political asylum got denied because we're also half Venezuelan. Uh, and if you're confused right now, welcome to the U.S. immigration system. <laughs> After denying our asylum, we were granted a humanitarian status called withholding of removal, which means that I've been in the U.S. for 15 years um, and I can't leave. Uh, I, if I leave, I won't be able to return to this country legally. This status is referred to in the immigration community as the golden cage. But I stand here eternally grateful for this country as it has given me and my family a future that I could have never, ever dreamed of. But let me tell you, my immigration story is one of privilege. In the past three years, working with um, organizations that advocate for human rights in agriculture in the U.S., I had the honor to meet farm workers in California, Florida, and across the eastern port, in the eastern um, coast. <laughs> um, these are workers that harvest their food, that feed us. They have fled hunger, extreme poverty. They have fled gang violence. They have lived here undocumented and marginalized in the shadows invisible to us, exposed to mistreatment and abuse, and now being treated as rapists and being treated as criminals. Mr. Trump, yeah. Mr. Trump, you build a wall, you kick us out, and you will starve. Your happy hotel room will go unkept. They will fall to the ground. Yeah, you continue to ban our brothers and sisters, our Muslim brothers and sisters, and the pillars of the country, the, the pillars that were built. Um, sorry. <laughs> and you wrote the pillars which this country has been founded on. I am here today because I say no more. No more. We peacefully rally today because we believe that human rights, that women rights are human rights, immigrant rights are human rights, labor rights are human rights. Because it's a big black division. Because we love not hate. Because we live, we can live in bridges, we don't believe in walls. And because we are on the right side of history today. No more. We say no more. We say no more. 